what a disappointment guys what a disappointment originally i was gonna make one video to cover both the nebula and putting it into a three inch tadpole but i was talking too much about one versus the other so i split them in two and if you want to see the notes just about the tadpole this is the video there is the dji air unit which is the giant one that's like 50 something grams then there is the cadex vista unit which i have installed in this three inch bangot now the main reason i wanted this nebula was because i wanted to add the dji system onto this armatan three inch this is the space grade version that i've had on the channel this is such an amazing special formula these 1106 motors on these three inch props just fly so amazingly well and i had been flying around i designed a custom mount for this to be able to hold the insta 360 go camera and then i thought to myself you know what the dji system quality is really similar to that insta 360 so could i you know keep the weight fairly similar by eliminating that external camera not having to worry about it and just record straight to my goggles and then not having a camera hanging off on top that could get potentially damaged uh, that was very attractive to me and this system uses the uh, nano size 14 millimeter camera the Cadex nebula comes in this box it still says vista kit so they must have changed the name sometime in the development process the package it comes in is very much the same as a regular vista it comes with the same antenna this is the same style like rush makes that has the hard um, section up here that makes it easier for mounting this ufl and then the center of the actual unit is identical to the vista the only difference is the camera itself which is a nano size camera meaning it's 14 millimeters across very tiny now it does sit a little bit proud um, so you can see even with the camera protection cage of this tadpole it's right at the front this is a kind of a nice large lens that they put on this thing which is very nice here we can compare it to a run cam racer uh, nano camera and then you can see that the lens does sit a mill or two more out but not as much as you might think uh, but you can also look at the way that it structures here it's very wide on the end if you look at them head on you can kind of see that right there so the camera is very much designed and the lens like a traditional nano size camera it just has some different components in the center of it which make it digital compatible now this build i decided to go with this ufl um, which variety has been testing and using with great success over this not so much for weight i think this only stays about two grams maybe a little less things like a gram and a half but i like this is for easier mounting on something very small like this like where am i going to mount this i could sort of zip tie it in like that but that's going to be difficult because of this hard section here and the way that this ends up is that your antenna mounting section is right your antenna mounting section is right here you can see it there's really not a lot of space i really kind of had to modify this um this guy ephraim he's been posting pics he was the first one to do this uh so great job on being the first one ephraim and so i kind of took some of his notes caleb also has done this um, those two guys caleb also sent me the file to be able to print this out this is a little printed um thing that you can find on thingiverse i think he modded his but i just used the one that uh, was available and it's sort of like if it's over the whoop size screws on this board over three of them and then it has three little tpu posts that stick up you can see two of them right here and so this fits very snugly you can see there really is like barely enough space to fit a strap in there but i really wanted the amazing feel of this tadpole with the dji digital signal and that was the goal behind this build of course i am using my custom mini immortal t mount that i designed and printed i had to move my crossfire receiver to the very back and so it's just kind of sitting in there i wish i had a better mounting solution but it can't fit on top of this uh, unfortunately the camera cable itself is kind of long 
I think I ordered the longer version of it. I probably should have ordered the shorter version because I had to kind of like bunch it up in there. Um, so really, there's two different lengths of camera cable. Take note on what type of a build you're doing when you order. Um, I ended up having to change out the board on this. The Diatone Mamba original version um, only had like one available UART and I was going to try to convert the other TX pad from the LED pad. I couldn't really quite get it. I had this nameless board sitting around that had two full UARTs, so I just put that in. So in order to get all this stuff to fit, I did put two, I did put two little M2 nuts at the bottom to raise this up a couple millimeters. You can also see I have two M2 nuts at the top to raise it even further. And then I did the same at the front. You can see that you got two M2 nuts right there. And then again, right here. And that really gave me enough room to raise everything enough to be able to fit it all in place. And this is not screwed down uh, in this setup. You can see it just floats, but because it's all tight, I'm not really too worried about it going anywhere. And this little plastic mounting thing is just, is designed with a little base. So it actually does raise the Vista unit about a mil and a half or two above the all-in-one board. I was concerned that it was going to touch something, but the design... Um, it's thicker at the bottom, so it doesn't allow it to go all the way and rest on there. So it actually works pretty well. And by building up this system versus this, these are both three inch quads. This is 90, about 91 grams, or this is about 191 grams. So 100 gram difference between these two three inches, both on the DJI system. And that's what I really wanted to accomplish. Stop for racing. This... I don't see how you could fly anything faster than like a small three inch on this. I would not want to fly a four inch or a five inch or a six inch with this camera. The latency is just too much. If you get speeds greater than what this thing flies, that latency is going to be problematic. In addition to the latency, the feed didn't cut out, but it sort of redrew itself. You know, if you ever get like a bad, um, laggy internet connection when you're watching a video and the screen kind of redraws, you'll see like the top third sort of redraw, then the middle, then the, then the bottom. Some people call that ghosting. Some people call that screen tearing. Whatever you want to call it, I experienced it fairly frequently. And it happened not super fast. I mean, if I was flying faster, it could have potentially definitely led to a crash. That is extremely disappointing. That's extremely problematic. I'm okay with the actual quality of the image, although it is pretty bad, but I would have probably suffered through it. I was really hoping that the overall image quality of this thing was gonna be closer to what you see out of the Vista, and it's really not. And that's very disappointing because you only save about four grams by going to this setup. Now you do get more versatility because you can put it into frames like this. So it will fit in here just barely. You have to make a few modifications. Um, but like, man, what a disappointment, guys. What a disappointment this thing is. I mean, I kind of wish I just didn't buy it. So if, if you are the kind of person that's sensitive to latency, now, I am running the dipole at the back, but Ferrari has tested that extensively. You can go watch some of his DJI videos where he is running a dipole just like that. I don't think that's accounting for the negative image quality on this thing. Um, that screen tearing is, seems to be very unique to this particular system. And so this just is not ready for prime time. I don't know if there's if this is an issue with hardware, if there's gonna be an update that can fix some of this. The camera quality could be better. I wish the bit rate was a little bit higher, so it would be a little, I mean, it's like, why even take the analog system off of this? And I probably am just gonna throw the Phoenix Nano 2 back on here because that camera is so good for analog. And it's like, you're really starting to, get lower and closer to that analog. And this is like that gray zone where 
Yes, the Phoenix 2 is maybe still not as good as the lower quality of this, but like you don't have the latency issues and that makes it very difficult to fly. It took the fun out of flying this thing. And this is one of my funnest quads I've ever built in a long time. And it was just nerve wracking thinking, you know, am I going to crash? Is it going to cut out the screen tearing thing? Like if I did, was not familiar with that place, it would have been game over. So in addition to the 16 by nine, if you're not used to, in addition to the milky cloudy coloration, when you're pointing anywhere close to the sun or a bright light source, you need to be aware of the super high latency, the screen tearing ghosting. And uh, I just, I just don't know if it's worth it. You know, saving 25 bucks on this versus the Vista. There are other frames that are gonna be coming out that are going to be able to accommodate this. DJI, you know, you need to step in and like check Caddx because this product is not ready for prime time in my opinion.